Hello world and welcome to the third episode of Kerbal Rocket School. In this episode we will learn about staging. What is a stage? How do I do it properly? How does this help? Well, let's find out. Ah, the decoupler. You will learn to love this part. So simple yet so important. The decoupler will separate our rockets into stages. When a rocket has multiple stages, that means it's really a series of rockets stacked on top of each other. The rocket at the bottom will do its work, then drop away from the rest of the craft. Then the next rocket will go off, then the one on top, then the one on top. There are four different decouplers available for use. There are one and three meter variants of the vertical decouplers and two variants of radial decouplers. You also may see something called a tricoupler. Don't be confused, this is not a decoupler. It is simply a type of adapter. The two different types of decoupling are used for the different types of staging. Serial, or vertical staging, involves stacked rockets like the one I described earlier. Radial decouplers are used in parallel or horizontal staging. This is when other rockets are used alongside the main craft to boost it up higher. Parallel stages, also called boosters, will be covered in the next episode. So we're going to take the rocket we made in episode 1 and add stages underneath. I want to try to get this rocket into orbit, and I think one extra stage should do it. The lower stage will have to get the upper stage into space, and the upper stage will actually get into orbit. To get started, let's add a decoupler underneath the engine. Now, what do we want our lower stage to be? Let's start by using the tricoupler. This part separates a single 1 meter rocket into three 1 meters rocket working in tandem. Instead of adding on each rocket separately, let's use the symmetry tool to make the three parts even. The lower stage now has to be light and powerful enough to push itself and the upper stage but also needs to have enough fuel so it's actually useful. Attaining this balance is one of the biggest challenges in rocket design. I'll talk more about using solid methods to attain this balance in later episodes, but for now, let's do it the Kerbal way. Based on experience, I'm guesstimating that three normal sized fuel tanks and the more powerful one meter engine should be powerful enough to get the upper stage out of the highest part of the atmosphere. On the bottom right corner of the screen is our staging setup. You will see one stage for each function the ship will carry out. We carry out these functions in order during flight by pressing space. These functions include engine ignitions, decoupling, and parachute deployments, among others. These sections will automatically be organized by the game as you build your rocket. It will also divide up the parts by the sections of the ship. However, if you don't like how the game sets this up, you can change things yourself. You can add or delete sections by mousing over the staging setup and clicking the plus and minus buttons. You can click and drag parts or groups of parts to move them. To separate groups of parts, first click on the group, then click away, then click on one of the parts to move it individually. For example, we can set up the three bottom engines to fire one at a time. First, let's add a new section, separate one of the engines, then move it into that section. Repeat this process and the engines are now completely separated. Unfortunately, this is an absolutely horrible idea because the ship will have unbalanced thrusts. So let's not do that. You can think of the staging setup as a mission plan of sorts for our craft. First, the lower engine will fire. After fuel is depleted, we can separate that stage by activating this decoupler. Then we can ignite the engine for the next stage. After that, we separate that engine from the capsule and then activate the parachute. And so we have built our first multi-stage spacecraft. Will it complete its mission of getting into orbit? Let's find out! Alright, here we are on the launch pad. Jebediah is our pilot yet again. And we're ready to go, so let's turn on the SAS, let's throttle up to 100%, and T minus 5, 4, 3, and liftoff of the Jeb 3. Hopefully, the first craft to achieve orbit. In our space program, anyway. Eh, who cares? <laughs> I'm gonna try to pay attention and keep a nice ascent profile, but it's kind of hard. <laughs> Sometimes I space out when these these launches are pretty boring. You gotta admit, at least when you know when you're used to them. I guess when you're when you're new, they can be pretty exciting. <laughs> I'm actually going a bit fast, so I'm gonna slow down. You don't want to be going too fast, otherwise you'll lose too much speed to drag. And you want to keep all as much speed as possible. At this point, we're approaching where we ran out of fuel last time, and we're doing we're doing great. And I'm gonna start my gravity turn. 
as in I'm gonna start actually turning into my orbit. Uh, try to keep it on the 90 degree mark, but I am not perfect. This craft isn't that steady. I would like it to be steadier. But stuff like that, like structural integrity, that's gonna be covered in a future episode. Not the next, the next is boosters, but the one after that maybe, I think is on stability. All right, and there we have our apoapsis is at 88,000 meters, which is well out of the, the atmosphere. Uh, the atmosphere ends at 70,000 meters, just about a little bit less, but if you're above 70,000, you're good. And I'm gonna coast to my apoapsis, which is the highest point in the arc. And, at, and when I'm close to it, I'm going to burn horizontal to achieve orbit. We're running low on fuel, but we had more than I thought we would at this point. Alright. Start the resting up now. And there we go, we're out of fuel, so... I'm gonna press spacebar to release the stage. And then spacebar again to launch the next stage. Hopefully we have enough to get into orbit. <laughs> I'm actually gonna slow down, I'm gonna cut off thrust and coast a little bit closer to the apoapsis. So you want to burn out your apoapsis to, uh, to make sure you get your mo the most bang for your buck, so to speak. And since I am on a tight fuel constraint, I want to make sure I get into orbit. So I'm going to keep my apoapsis, keep at my apoapsis. You'll notice on the nav ball, I, what I'm doing, I'll thrust a little bit up and then move back to point at the apoapsis, to point uh, horizontal. Uh, when I when you thrust up, you actually move your whole uh, orbit. You shift your orbit over lateral, like to the side. And yep, 88 by 88, we are in orbit, people. Hopefully, we have enough fuel to deorbit. It's a bit close, but I think we can do it. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, when you thrust uh, upwards, I think the, the term is radial, radial thrust, it'll push your, it'll basically pull your apoapsis closer to you. Uh, so in order to stay at my, apo ap at my apoapsis, I was thrusting upwards to kind of bring it closer towards me and then pushing it back down towards the horizon to make sure I had the most horizontal thrust. So yeah, we are in orbit. I say this is a job well done. Congratulations all around. Yeah. <laughs> you, yep, you can see I was just about to say, our uh, lower stage just crashed into the ocean. So we don't gotta wanna worry about that. We don't gotta worry about that. To mark this glorious occasion, let us take good old Jebediah out for a spacewalk. I'm gonna turn my capsule facing upwards so I can get back in. And here we go! Oh, oh wrong button! <laughs> nope! <laughs> wrong button, my bad. There we are! Ah, beautiful. Let's let go, Jeb. Let go. Turn on my, uh,. My jetpack, and oh my god, we're spinning, we're spinning, we're spinning, we're spinning, we're spinning, oh my gosh. Okay, 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 we're good, we're good. Alright! How about, let's, let's smile for the camera, come on. Yes. Indeed, we are in space. Alright. Watch you. Jebediah's had a long flight. Let's let's let him get a little rest. Yeah. Sunbathing. <laughs> Extreme sunbathing. <laughs> Alright, that's enough. That's enough. Let's get back into the capsule. Oh my gosh. It's flying away. It's flying away. There we are. Oh, you're upside down. I guess it's gonna go in butt first, but okay. <laughs> and here we are, safe and sound in our capsule. Alright. I'm gonna warp to our periaps, and we'll take it from there. Actually, this is a horrible idea, I just realized. We wanna go to our apoaps. Okay, here we are. I'm gonna point our ship retrograde. 
And hopefully, we will have enough juice to deorbit ourselves. Alright. Here goes nothing. Did we make it? Yes! Yes, we did! Alright! <laughs> oh, look, you can see Kerbal Space Center. You can barely see the pixels shining. You might not be able to see it in the video, but I can see it. It's right over here. Make sure my mouse is on right now. It's right over here, the little peninsula. Okay, it's time for us to stage again. I'm going to point upwards, or radial, as it were. And I'm going to press space to detach our capsule. There we go. Alright, at this time we are actually entering the upper reaches of the atmosphere. We're not actually going to slow down, start slowing down that much yet. When we get to about the middle of the middle part of the atmosphere, then I'm going to deploy the parachutes. Alright, 20,000 meters. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Where's our parachute? Did it deploy? Parachute? Hello? Parachutes? Did you deploy? Uh... Should have deployed by now, I think. Um... There we go! Oh my god! <laughs> that scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> and there we go, our parachute is now fully deployed. Jebediah is gonna float safely down onto the sea. Alright. Alright! Bravo! Mission accomplished. We have successfully sent a man into orbit and brought him safely to back down to Kerbin with just two stages. Two rocket stages, at least. And now Jebediah can go out for a swim and eagerly await his rescue. But yeah, I guess he's swimming above water. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, well, I guess he can sit here and float until a ship comes to rescue him. But before I go, let's talk about why staging is useful. As we learned in episode 1, a rocket works by throwing stuff one way to propel it the other. This process creates thrust, which is equal to the mass of the fuel burns times the speed shot out at. We can apply this formula back onto the rocket to determine the thrust effect on it. The acceleration of a rocket is related to both the mass of the rocket and the thrust applied onto it. If the mass decreases or the thrust increases, the acceleration will increase. As this rocket burns its fuel, the fuel tank's empty. The craft does get lighter due to the mass of the fuel, but it still carries around these empty fuel tanks. Staging is a solution to this problem. The craft can shed the useless weight in order to keep itself light and fast. Another bonus of staging is that it allows more flexibility in engine design. By spreading out the workload between multiple engines, the engines can be designed so they're most useful for the role they play. In other words, you can use a very powerful, fuel-hungry engine to get you out of the thickest part of the atmosphere, but once you're higher up, you can use a more efficient engine for the lighter atmosphere. In short, staging keeps the craft light, so the craft can stay fast. That's all for this time, and I will see you out there.